All right. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, thank you so much, everyone who's uh, logged in this far to join us. Um, we're going to give us just another moment while people uh, continue to log in. But for now, can you all verify just entering in that little chat box there that you can see the visual on the screen and that you can hear our voices? All right. Folks, can you hear us okay? Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. All right, we'll give it just another moment and then we'll get started. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and kick things off. Uh, so again, thank you so much for taking time to join us today. Uh, over the next hour, we're going to be covering a very special edition of Office Hours. This is our app sheet automation edition. Uh, please forgive any background noise you may hear. We are also in work from home mode and uh, doing our best uh, to keep noises to a minimum. Uh, my name is uh, Jennifer. For those of you uh, who I may have uh, interacted with before in a previous office hour, it's great to see you again. Uh, I'm joined by two very critical individuals on our automation team. Uh, we have Chris Paul. Chris Paul, if you'd like to make a quick introduction. Hello, everybody. Uh, Chris Paul, uh, one of the product leads on AppSheet Automation. I'm super excited to be here and share some amazing product updates. Awesome. Thanks so much, Chris. Well, we're excited to have you here. And then I'm also jo joined today by Darko. Um, Darko, I think this is your first office hours with us, correct? It is, yes. Awesome. So we have an office hours newbie. Uh, Darko, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, say a couple things about yourself? Sure. Uh, Darko Vukovic, based in Colorado, uh, working on our document automation and intelligent processing capabilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, I look forward to sharing what we're up to and getting uh, everybody's feedback. Awesome. I'm so excited to have you both here. We have a jam-packed agenda to get through. Uh, so let's go ahead and just dive in and get started. All right. Uh, so since this is an office hours, a couple of things we always like to make sure um, everyone has available are resources for learning. Um, there's actually two URLs in the bottom uh, that will link out to two different resources for you uh, to help on your learning journey. One is our AppSheet Creator Community, which many of you may be participating in already, but it's a great resource to engage with other AppSheet app creators uh, and automation creators now that we've added uh, that capability in as well. Um, you can ask questions, interact with the team. Uh, there's a whole list of getting started resources there as well, so I highly recommend that. There is also the other uh, link you have available in your bar on your screen is going to be a getting started series on YouTube that we've been working through. I believe there's eight videos there, and we're going to cover a number of those concepts in one of the videos I've linked to in that series. But know that some of these other core concepts are also covered there, so you have an additional video visual resource for you. Uh, adjacent to this community, uh, we have an incredible number of users around the globe and a number of these creators have taken a lot of the content that we've produced previously and recreated that uh, for different geographic re regions around the globe and changed the language in the process. I think there's 26 was the last count uh, in this particular thread, but if you have customers or if you work with partners or if your team is in a different corner of the globe and English is not a first language, I highly recommend checking out this thread to help further others on their app creator journey. All right, so big exciting news. Uh, we made an announcement yesterday, Chris Paul. Uh, do you want to actually talk about this a little bit? Yes, we, we made the big announcement yesterday. Actually, automation is generally available. This has actually been a culmination of a uh, initiatives that started, uh, you know, not too long back, and uh, we we announced the uh, the foray into this uh, September of last year, ring next, 
But we're super excited uh, with that feed automation now being here. Uh, we feel it is uh, it has a lot of uh, cool capabilities for building powerful automations, and uh, we are really excited to show some of our customers uh, and audience today exactly that. Uh, so yes, I, I think you know uh, this has been a discussion for a long time, and we are super excited to now finally bring this feature uh, and product set to customers. Awesome. Yeah, this is this is a really cool moment. Uh, all right, so uh, moving forward, and we're and we're going to talk about a lot of this today. But one thing I do want to mention um, before we dive down a little deeper is that automation uh, and legacy workflows have a lot in common. There is a transition taking taking place right now where legacy workflows uh, are going to become the, live on the new automation um, systems. And Chris Paul and Darko, if you want to elaborate on this, please do. Um, just know that we will be deprecating workflows. Um, as of right now, the date is set for April 28th. Um, but we are we want to work closely with you to ensure that this is the smoothest, tra smoothest transition possible. So if you have questions or if you need help or guidance, please don't hesitate to reach out. That's part of the purpose of this office hours is to help provide the resources so that you're able to do so successfully. Just know that those workflows that you have currently, you actually don't need to do anything for that migration to take place. We're doing all of that behind the scenes. So we, we want to make that clear. Um, Chris Paul or Darko, did you have anything you wanted to add on that? Yeah, let me just, uh, let me just maybe uh, call a few things out. So, so as Jennifer mentioned, right, uh, we, uh, the existing or legacy workflows are going to be available uh, for, so between now and uh, April the 28th, uh, every user will have the opportunity to continue creating new workflow rules and reports. That's phase one. Phase two, which is post uh, April 28th, you'll still be able to uh, modify your existing workflow rules and reports. You just won't be able to create new ones because of AppSheet Automation GA. We obviously want everyone to be able to start using the new stuff. So that's phase two. Phase three, which will happen slightly later, and we'll communicate this, we will automatically migrate your workflow rules and reports into bots. That will happen uh, again in a rolling fashion, but again, there's no action needed from your, your part on that. Uh, we will automatically migrate uh, them for you. So these are three phases. Just want to make sure you know people understand that, and of course, we'll be around in the later part of this webinar as well to answer additional questions if there are any on this topic. Thank you, Chris. Paul. Darko, did you have anything you wanted to add? Or are you ready just to get into it? No, nope, let's get into it. All right. Okay. So, app sheet automation. Uh, we're going to give a, a kind of a quick primer here to explain what app sheet automation is, and then Chris Paul is actually going to walk through a demo uh, to see in real time. So, app sheet automation as a concept um, is the evolution of the no code platform app sheet to become more process and workflow oriented are automation oriented uh, to help empower those that are non-technical and technical alike to build powerful applications and automations to help improve their work lives. Uh, this is meant to help address that long tail of processes. It takes a lot of time. Um, we did some research before this launch took place and we found out that you know, we all lose roughly 20% of our work weeks to tasks that are manual and tedious that we actually don't need to be wasting time on. So. Our goal is to help uh, get rid of that so you can focus on high impact work rather than this manual work that you might be doing behind the scenes. All right. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Chris Paul. And we're going to do a quick demo of walking you through um, what exactly that looks like. Chris Paul, all yours. Awesome. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, if you can quickly confirm if you're able to see my uh, Chrome browser, which is getting started, that'd be awesome. It's loading right now. Yep, there you go. Give it a few seconds. Okay, awesome. So again, folks, super excited to uh, actually be here on this day, uh, just one day after the automation GA. So I plan to cover three things in my demo. First, I'm going to walk through how it is extremely simple to create you know, simple and powerful bots. Uh, next, I'd like to be showcase one unique feature that we've added for automation, which is support for external data change events. 
And three, I will walk us through how you can really leverage some of the modularity aspects of uh, you know the uh, the automation uh, components and build both simple to complex uh, you know processes and workflows. And we'll take a look at you know the advancement that we have kind of really brought into this feature set. So first off, what I'm going to do is actually start with a sample app. So I'm sure many of you folks have you know, seen sample apps. There's actually one which was linked in the blog post yesterday. Uh, and so in this case, it's a very simple app which had an employee sheet. So I will just say office hours employee app. So while I'm doing this thing, you know, as you know, actually there's uh, essentially understanding uh, the structure in this case, it's a simple employee's um, uh, data set. And so what we're really going to do out here is just quickly walk through an example of how you can build a bot extremely quickly. So, so far, I've just you know, made a simple uh, copy of this sample app. Uh, I'm out here, and I can see that I have a new employee's uh, uh, view out here. Obviously, there is no data at this point in time. Let's go and actually add a new employee. So I'm going to just add Jennifer out here. Okay. And excellent. So I'll just add this out here. Well, this is great. Now that I have a piece of data out here, I would really want to maybe uh, you know get some background activity coins. In this case, there's pretty much nothing which has happened at this point in time. I'll just quickly refresh my email here. Uh, so as we expected, no action because we just simply added you know, a record to a, a sheet. Let's actually go and create a bot. So in this case, because we know that the app is already pointed to the employee's uh, uh, table, it comes up with some bot suggestions. Let's pick the first one where we want an email to go out every single time a new employee record is added. Let's pick this. Just by clicking on the suggestion, I actually have a fully and completely configured bot ready to go. Let's take a look at some of the bot details. So a bot is a very simple concept. It has an event, and it has a process. So anytime this event occurs, this process will be executed. And this process can contain something as simple as just one step out here, or it can be a complex process, as you'll see in a few minutes. If I click on the event configuration, you can see it has automatically picked up the, the exact table. It has added data change type of ads only. The right pane out here provides for some very easy configuration for different steps and different components of the bot as you go along. So out here, you can see it already picked a send an email tab for me, and it has you know, assigned some things by default. Let's actually go out here. We can use the power of the full power of expressions available to us. Uh, that's available within the AppSheet platform. So you can see the expression assistant out here. And at this point in time, let's just hit save. So what we've done is something very, very simple. I've just simply added a bot which says whenever a new employee record is queried, send an email out. Okay, let's take a look. Let's go back to the app view. Let's add one more employee right here. So I'll just add myself right now. Okay, and I'm a product manager. Great, so I've added a new record, which is obviously backed by a sheet in the sample lab that we just started. But now we actually have an automation behind the scenes. So the demo gods are with us today. I should be getting an email, and I did, and it sent me exactly what just happened out here. So let's quickly recap what happened. We had a, 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 an app that we made from a sample app, which had a sheet. You can see the data out here. By the way, the sample app is available to everyone. Uh, AppSheet being a, an intelligent platform, it automatically created a view for us, which is a view that you see out here. Next, we have really 
uh, taken the power of the intelligence built into the platform, even to the automation uh, surface area. So as you saw, without me trying to configure anything much, I was able to just create a new bot. It offered some useful suggestions. And when I clicked on that, it actually completely implemented the bot for me. All I had to go out there was actually configure the email address that I wanted the email to go to. So as you just saw, it's extremely simple to build bots. Now let's take a look at part two of the demo. It's great that when everything is happening through the app interface, you know, bots work and things are just kept in, in, in sync. So automation really will help you kind of take away the minutia of trying to manage your manual processes. It can really help you, you know, improve uh, your work, uh, become more productive, et cetera. Let's take a look at second part here. Now where I want to actually affect the bots to go ahead and do certain things, when someone external than the app sheet app makes changes. So this brings us to our next part, which is support for external data change events. So for this, I'm actually going to just pick an existing app that I have. I have another app going out here, it's called the Sample Employee Automation. In that, again, I have a bot which looks very similar. And in this case, I do the same thing, that send me an email, so I'll just send myself an email out here in this case. But in this case, it's backed by a sheet, which is right here. And so what I'm going to do out here is, I'm going to add my name live, I'm just using a different email address because I've really configured uh, the bot to actually send me an email directly, and I'll ignore this for right now. So in this case, I just came and updated this sheet externally. Uh, we have an events add-on, which we have uh, released for some time now. You can see that using a simple uh, site config out here, you can actually connect this sheet, sheet one, to the table, in this case, the new employee table, which you just saw referred. And I've made, come and made some changes to the sheet directly. So in this case, there is no application interaction which has happened through AppSheet. We just came in, someone came and updated the sheet directly. Well, if the demo gods are still with us, I should get another email, and here we are. And we get this email which talks about, you know, a new record that was added, and obviously we have skipped certain things. I just kind of, uh, you know, put my own email out here. Great, so what we reviewed out here was uh, the second part of the, uh, or the second feature that we wanted to talk about, which is support for external data change events. So using this mechanism, it becomes extremely easy for customers uh, like yourselves to be able to build more richer applications which support data changes to external sources. Uh, with the automation GA release, we support um, events for three different sources. The first one you saw was Sheets. Uh, it can be done through this events add-on, and you can connect this thing to the, to the application. The second source we also support is Salesforce, so any kinds of updates to any standard or custom objects in Salesforce are completely supported. Uh, and then we also have supporting, uh, we also have support for uh, eventing based on drive folders as well. Uh, Dalton will talk a little bit about that a little bit later in the, uh, in, in the webinar. So again, support for external data change events adds and opens up a wide array of use cases which are completely external to AppSheet so your bots can still continue working in the background and can still you know, automate and execute processes, keep systems in sync when you are on the go. Okay, what I now want to do is just quickly talk a little bit about the monitoring aspect of it. So, you know, obviously your bots are running and you want to be able to stay on top of them. Well, guess what? We actually have an AppSheet app. So this app is actually built on AppSheet. Uh, you can, you know, just like you build an app for your own use cases, we have built an app so we can offer this app to our customers, which provides insight into how the bots are executing, uh, how they're working. So here, you can see that, you know, I have 
uh, different apps out here. Um, I can see the different uh, statuses. In this case, I see you know, how many of my bots kind of completed, how many are pending. This pending is really the aspect of, you know, we adding support for long running kind of processes. Some approval processes can take a while, right? So bots can just complete execution right away or they may take some time to uh, execute. Uh, then you have a bot status by day and then average time to completion. If you come into the run stat here, you can start to see some detailed uh, bot run data. So in this case, you can see that this bot ran on this day. We have some event information as to what data was triggered, uh, the process which got triggered based on the event, and then all the different process steps. And individually, you can see the data for each and every step appearing out here. Okay, so that concludes the second part of the demo. I'm quickly going to talk about uh, the modularity aspects of the platform and why that is super important. So I'm going to just showcase one app out here. Uh, it's called Huli Apps, and I'll really just walk through this app very, very quickly. So in this case, you see that, you know, when you go and create bots, as an example, I have this bot which says, whenever a new invoice is created, send an email. So here's an event, and here's a somewhat complex process. So, you know, you have support for calling other processes, right? You can do that. This makes for a very, very powerful mechanism. So you could create processes independently, which can be reused across multiple bots. One example of a process is you can have a standard approval process, custom approval process you can build, which you can rapidly use across multiple bots. We also have support for things like branching. So here's a branch condition. Uh, you also have uh, support for being able to, you know, um, do things like wait. So when the bot is created behind the scenes, it actually generates a lot of components that are completely portable and reusable. What do I mean by that? So if you come into the event stat here, you can see that there's an event out here called new invoice is created. And this indicator shows you this is a shared component. Let's go click on that. It tells you that this event is actually used inside of this bot. As you create more events, you can actually reuse them across multiple bots. So it really helps you to write or build ones to use multiple times kind of uh, concept. Similarly, processes. You can continue building new processes, and then you can have these processes actually enable interactions in multiple bots. Same thing with tasks. You see I have a bunch of different tasks out here, uh, which can all be reused across multiple processes and events. Okay. So hopefully, this gave you a very, very good idea of you know what automation is all about, and then we'll you know at this point in time quickly get back into the uh, presentation. So I'll stop sharing my screen, Jennifer. If you can go to the uh, next slide whenever you're ready. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, just um, while this is loading. Uh, I have a question that was just asked that's going to set us up, I think, nicely for the next stretch of the conversation. Um, so this question, and I think this is going to take us a few st stages to answer. So this question is, can you explain how bots, events, processes, and tasks are interrelated and how they compare to the old actions, workflows, and reports we already know? So keep that Absolutely. in mind. So I think. Chris Paul yes. and Darko, while we walk through this. Absolutely. I think there's a perfect segue into some of the slides, which will actually help address exactly some of those questions. So if you go to the next slide. Okay, so let's start from here. And so in this case, I'll walk you all through the part. So what you're seeing is an example of a screenshot of the same bot. So in this case, you have a bot which has an event and a process. Um, let's go uh, to the next slide. Just take a few seconds to load. And this has some uh, animation and build up. I'm not sure what animation we'll be able to see, but it should be able to highlight whenever the next slide loads here. Uh, it'll be able to call out certain components. Oops, no, I think you went way too ahead. It went too far. Did it not push? 
Yeah, yeah, just yeah, just wait here for maybe a second here. Yeah. I think we just show up here in a few. Okay, that's fine. We can just stay where we are right now. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about some components. So the event part out here is what you see in existing workflow rules. That is exactly when you say watch for a change to a specific uh, table, in this case, employees table. And it sets a data change, and it also specifies ads, adds an update, updates only, et cetera. OK, great, now it renders. So that's the event part. That is exactly how it matches up to the existing workflow rules. The process part, this is where the magic comes in. So in existing workflow rules, all we support today is a sequence of actions. So you can keep adding multiple actions out there, and we call them you know, email actions, which we call as tasks, because that's how we think they are. Uh, you can do email, SMS, notification. You can also change data using data change action. So you know, the process construct is, allows for absolutely representing the exact same thing that you had in workflow rules. So you can have a series of different tasks out here. Some of these steps are control steps, such as branching. We never really had branching within uh, workflow rules. So that's provided out here. We also have support for things like, you know, calling another process, right? So there's some more complex artifacts that we have introduced into the mix of things. Uh, if you go to the next slide. Let's go one more. Yep, let's stay here. Okay, so summarizing. So bot is a combination of, you know, an event and a process which can have multiple tasks. So in this case, when something happens, in this case, the new employee record being created, do some set of activities. This example shows a, a more simplified version of a process, which just has one uh, step, which is of type email. And the email task essentially will send out the email. So again, very, very synonymous to what you've been seeing with workflow rules. Next slide. Events. Again, this. Uh, config pane would be awfully relevant and similar to what you know you may see in your workflow rules. Right? So this is exactly the condition part of it. Uh, you can see you can specify conditions, data change type. This interface should look very, very familiar. So in this case, events uh, are of two types. When data changes or it can run on a schedule. So this is the equivalent of the scheduled report. So what we've done is provided for a more simplified interface saying we can have data change events and events can automatically occur on a schedule. So the schedule part of it mimics exactly what you would do from a schedule report uh, in the legacy product today. Uh, the second thing I want to call out here is now not only do we have data changes which can emanate from within the application interface, but we also support external data change events. We spoke about three sources we support today, Sheets, Salesforce, and then Drive for documents. Next one. And actually, Prith Paul, there's a, a question that we had come in. Um, does The question mm -hmm. was, does AppSheet support SmartSheet with automation? Um, and the answer to that is no right now. But one thing I want to add is AppSheet as a, as a product does support SmartSheet. It's the external eventing for AppSheet automation that does not yet support SmartSheet. But I think that's an important application so, to make. Which means you can still leverage automation against SmartSheet just like you would today with the bot that I showed in the very first cut. We just don't support you know, a bot detecting updates made to the SmartSheet directly independently of using AppSheet. If, however, you have the app that we showed here, where an, an update is made to a smart sheet through the app sheet application, that will absolutely work, and the bot will trigger the event. Uh, what Jennifer is calling out more precisely is, if someone was to go and modify the smart sheet externally, independently, that's the part. Today, we have support for three sources, Sheets, Salesforce, and then Drive for Documents. Okay, uh, next slide, please. And we, just got events, a, we just got uh, a question about, uh, sure. we just got a question about Microsoft Excel. It would, it would be the same thing as Smartsheet that Chris Paul just mentioned. So just keep that in mind. Any of the data sources we didn't list, 
um, if you follow the steps that he just mentioned, um, I, I think that helps resolve that piece of the puzzle. Okay, processes. Okay, so a process, this is a very important one, right? This is where actually we unleash the full power of automation, which was previously, you know, kind of, um, I would say, uh, slightly, you know, tamed with, with uh, workflow rules, you could do a sequence of actions, right? But uh, whenever you had to do the same set of actions somewhere else in another workflow rule, well, guess what? You had to reauthor the entire workflow rule again and then keep adding those four or five things. Well, good news is process is a completely modular component, which means, A, we provide more than just a simple sequence of action. You actually can create in this case, you can see in this process, you know, you can have just simple steps or it, the process can be complex. It can have multiple steps. It can have support, it can branch based on conditions. Uh, as you saw, it can call other processes. Uh, it can loop over many records. It also has support for wait, which means it can wait uh, at that step till some action is taken. For example, a finance manager approves uh, a specific invoice. So it has all those constructs. And the beauty of this approach is, once you're done authoring your process, either the process got created while you're authoring your bot, but because the process is available to you as a completely reusable component, you can then go consider n number of bots and reuse the exact same process in those multiple bots without having to do anything extra. We feel modularity, although may provide slight complexity, the benefits far outweigh in terms of right once, use multiple times uh, strategy. Next slide, please. And really quickly, while we transition to this next slide, I just want to mention um, we have a special guest that just joined us. Um, Praveen, would you like to say a quick hello to everyone here? Oh, Praveen being shy. I think Praveen is emotional. Okay. The release that happened <laughs> yesterday. We get some time <laughs> to recover. All right, we'll talk about tasks in the meantime. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about tasks. Tasks are various kinds, send an email, notification, you know, standard stuff, all of that book, all of that is carried forward. Carried forward. Uh, next slide, please. So let's bring it all together, right? You saw bots, they run processes when certain events happen. Uh, events are two types, data change events, uh, bonus support for external data changes as well. And then they can be scheduled. So collectively they address both the entry points either for a workflow rule or for a schedule report. Processes are a sequence of steps. These can be control steps, can be just a simple one uh, step process it could be a multi-step complex process and it has support for branching, wait steps, calling other processes, so on and so forth. And then tasks which are used within processes are also completely reusable. So a combination of all this leaves you with some extremely powerful reusable building blocks which can help you create powerful automations, you know, within minutes across multiple data sources to address a lot of different use cases. Okay, with that, I'm gonna go to the next slide. We'll talk maybe for a minute on automation monitoring and then I'll turn it over to Darko. Okay, so just oh, the meta quickly recapping. Piece. Yes, this is the meta moment for all of us, right? This is a perfect example of how uh, we got jealous of our customers because you guys are building some awesome apps and we decided <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be a great idea to actually use AppSheet on AppSheet. And the example out here is our monitoring app, which uses the exact same component that's available to all of you. And uh, it takes uh, your monitoring uh, to the next level. It, it brings deep insights into your bot execution. We have some uh, charts which can provide you overview on how your bots are performing and the run stab will give you some more details on the box run and execution data. Okay, with that, I'm super excited to pass it on to um, Darko, who's gonna talk us through some awesome document automation capabilities, um, which is also part of the automation release. Uh, over to you, Darko. 
Great. Thank you, Fitzball, and hello, everybody, again. Um, so with the document automation, it's really a layer on top of what Fitzball just showed with, um, you know, all the process automation. We wanted to take that capability and then empower you to use it with documents as well. So what we're looking at for our first release here is that you can now uh, link a folder to an app sheet table, and then that folder can serve to automatically ingest and trigger uh, processes when documents are inserted in that folder. So for example, let's say you create a Google Drive folder for uh, invoices, you can then manually upload an invoice into that Google Drive folder, and that would automatically trigger an invoice extraction to pull the both the data and the metadata of that invoice out and then hand it over to a process that can then process it further downstream. Uh, so for this, we're leveraging Document AI, which is a Google service for uh, specifically reading and understanding documents, both physical documents that you might take a photo of, as well as digital documents such as a PDF. Um, and so those documents could be used both within applications if you just wanted to have a way to say uh, add receipts to a, a Google Sheet and then you want to build application views on top of that, uh, you now have a way to basically process those receipts to automatically extract the data from them to avoid having to uh, go through and manually enter that data for each receipt. Um, and then similarly for folders in general, uh, you can now build views uh, that are representations of a Google Drive folder. Uh, which allows you to, for example, let's say you have service manuals or something like that that you wanted to have available within your application, you can now build a view which allows you to see what those files are, uh, to search across them, and then to be able to actually open them within your mobile application. So if we can go to the next slide. So we've made this uh, configuration uh, very simple. It's when you go to create a new um, a table within AppSheet, uh, within an existing application, you'll be able to go down a UX path that shows you this as an option. And so here you'll be able to pick the document type that you'd like to work with or the folder in general. Uh, note that as this is our first release, we're only supporting invoices, receipts, and W9. Uh, we are looking at expanding this list uh, significantly. So over time, you'll see more and more document types that we know how to automatically parsed. Uh, we are also looking to, in the future, add additional data sources. So for now, it's Google Drive, uh, but we'd love to hear what, you know, what storage services you guys use for your documents uh, so that we know both what documents we should be looking to add extraction capabilities for as well as sources for those documents. Uh, and then you, all you'd have to do basically is pick the Google Drive folder and then give it a table name and from there, it's pretty much the rest of it is as it is today with an app sheet. Uh, so if you can go to your next, uh, the next slide, please, Jennifer. Yeah, and while I move this over, just a quick note, um, there is a little survey box that you'll see uh, in your screen. And there's two questions in that box. The first is actually asking what type of documents um, you would like to hopefully see supported in the future. Let us know. Um, that's the best way to help us prioritize and see what's feasible moving forward. Um, so feel free to fill that out uh, whenever you have time during the, the next 20 minutes or so. All right, Darko, back to you. Great. Uh, so once I basically go ahead and make that configuration, um, you'll see that indicates a receipt here. Um, you know, numbers one, two, and three, those are three different tables that are created so that document AI can appropriately extract the information and place them there for you. Um, and then beyond that, you can use it within an application denoted by number four, or you can use it within a process automation uh, by having a bot trigger on these events, like Chris Paul mentioned. Uh, we're also looking in the future to add more support for, for example, for Gmail, so that you can you know, right-click a document within Gmail and trigger processes. Uh, all that will be writing on top of the same infrastructure that we built here. So. We think it's a great foundation as a, and a start, and would love to see um, how the community takes advantage of it, and we'd love to also hear back from the community on what we can do to enrich the solution to, to solve uh, your specific needs. 
Awesome. I guess, and then uh, I want to try to again. Ju- I'm sorry, go ahead, Jennifer. Oh, no, I was going to say, I want to try again to see. Praveen, are you there? Is your audio working? Okay, I think Praveen's still really excited about <laughs> what happened yesterday. All right, so while we um, get some work on his audio in the background, we have a number of really great questions that have come in. Uh, I'm going to display some on the screen, and then uh, we'll have the team go ahead and start tackling these um, as we move on. All right, so let me just address the so Jennifer, I've been asking some questions as well on the chat Q and A directly as well. Yeah, so let's start. Do with... you want me to read read out some of the questions and the answers? Um, no, I've got one I want to push. Um, okay. To show right now because this is this is a good one to start with. So this is a question about plans. Um, so what actually plan is re- is required for this capability? What will functionality be limited for premium plans? Uh, Chris Paul, you want to tackle this one? Yeah, so I think uh, what I would recommend is uh, if folks haven't been, uh, are you able to hear me okay, Jennifer? Mm, let me make sure yeah. I can yeah. I can be heard. Okay. So um, what I would recommend is, uh, you know, folks to check out the app sheet pricing page. Uh, you know, we have different plans which are out there. Uh, in general, the same concept that applied to, you know, uh, the same plan type that really applied to work for rules. Um, and reports are essentially the same things that apply to uh, uh, automation as well. So just as, as you needed uh, a minimum plan to be able to, you know, support uh, kind of workflow rules and, and schedule reports, the same thing applies to, um, to automation bots as well. For the document uh, pieces, there are some other exclusions. Dr. you just quickly want to talk about which plans kind of support uh, uh, the document processing capability? Uh, so, so it's all, all the plans. Um, they're just quota limitations uh, that basically restrict how many times you can uh, process it um, on a per creator basis. So I don't have those limits off the top of my head here, unfortunately, but they are documented in our public notes. Um, so you're free to use it, just a question of how much. Got it. Okay, so just to recap, uh, you know, your core automation capabilities are going to be available in, in NetSheet core and higher, um, along with the document processing capabilities, except there are different quota limits for the number of documents that can be processed. And, you know, they'll be available on, you know, publicly available documentation uh, for customers to review. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Next so question. Next Jennifer. question. So when is support for external events being other app sheet apps going to be implemented for bots? So um, my takeaway from this question is when are app sheet apps going to be able to talk to each other using bots? And please correct when me if I'm wrong. For external yeah. events, um, different about, when is support for external events being other app sheet apps going to be implemented for bots? Ah, I see. Okay. So I think uh, this is the ability to be able to have uh, uh, one app react to events from other apps. That's, that's, that's actually a great question. So uh, in this first release uh, for automation, GA, we essentially support uh, you know, bots kind of communicating with each other uh, directly uh, within, within one app. So I think there are some questions on the community which had also come up uh, between yesterday and this morning that I answered. So if you have, let's say, bot one, let's say we have an application A, and within that you have a couple of bots. If you have bot one which changes using a data change action and updates, let's say, table two, and you have bot two wired to listen to the event or data changes to table two, then the other bot can, will trigger based on you know uh, this first bot making some changes to table two which the second bot is listening on. Uh, you always have the option of leveraging the AppSheet API uh, from bot one. If you have a bot in the 
other app, let's say app B, there's nothing stopping you from you know using the app sheet API, uh, the action API to make a change or, or call that to the webhook, uh, which will trigger bot in application B. Uh, however, some of the other features that we're exploring is how do we really make eventing across apps within an account a little bit more first class. So there's some more thinking uh, that we are doing on that, and you know we'll update uh, shortly uh, in the next few months with what kind of design proposal will come up with that. But our vision is to be able to support eventing more natively, just like we do it today inside of one app, also across apps as well. Awesome. Thank you for that next answer, question. Paul. Okay, we're going to push the next question. We're going to try Praveen one more time. Yeah, I'm here. Call in. Hey, good morning. Thank you, Praveen, for joining right. us. Um, did you have any, uh, while, while we work through some of these questions, did you have any comments that you wanted to add or anything you wanted to address right now? Oh, yeah. Just, uh, I'm, I'm just looking, hi, everybody. I'm looking at all the questions. There's one class of questions around events from other sources, uh, and uh, in broad strokes, I just want to explain the um, um, the issues with events from variety of sources. Um, if it's if it's a database source or a smart sheet or a variety of different other sources, um, not all of them have a uniform way for us to to be for our system to be alerted when some data changes. So to get eventing out of this disparate set of sources, the only sort of standard possible answer is some kind of mechanism that pulls it. Right? So, so, so you know, every few minutes it, come, it uh, wakes up and says, oh, let me look at the database table, has something changed? So these are sort of um, somewhat tricky to pull off. So that's, in some sense, it's something we're going to invest in and do, but it's why we're not able to just come out of the door and say, we are able to listen to events on uh, all the data sources you have. It's something we'll gradually be able to add data source by data source. So that's sort of just giving a sense of why we're not able to just say it's available across everything on day one. Um, but it's something that uh, Google Sheets has a mechanism to be alerted, and so I'd be actually built this listener, and so it's there's sort of almost custom work to do for every data source to make that happen. So that's sort of just one thing I wanted to uh, broadly share. Um, but we wanted to make sure we brought the new capabilities uh, up to and beyond what the existing workflows can do and then make it available. Uh, and then we build on extra richness uh, rapidly, just like we do with other features in the product. Awesome. Thank you, Praveen. All right. So uh, next question is coming in. Uh, are the approvals also generated and recorded via bots, or are they manual? So I think that's a, that's a slightly loaded question. So as I mentioned, one of the beauties of AppSheet uh, is that it's a unified platform for apps and automation. As we saw, you're able to interact with app views, you're able to work with bots. So you essentially can really create whatever approval uh, makes that makes sense for you. And you can create which approvals today with an app sheet. As you know, they can be backed by sheets. Um, what you are able to do, however, is that through a bot, you can invoke different, uh, invoke that approval process. The bot has support for various kinds of steps. Some of the ones that are more relevant here are the uh, the wait for a condition step. So, uh, as an example, an approval could be uh, sent out to a finance manager, and till they approve uh, that invoice, as an example, which could be just watching for a condition, which means was the approval received? Uh, at that point, you know the uh, the, the bot semantics will kind of help, uh, you know, cater to approval kind of use cases. So approval is something which are built. Uh, we feel that we want to allow flexibility to our customers, uh, so they can really build rich approvals themselves, and they can very easily be wired into a bot, uh, just like I explained, to make for a very powerful uh, interactive experience. Awesome. All right, next question. When we are creating an automation, is it better to start with creating the smaller pieces first, such as tasks and processes and events and finally bots, or do you start with bots? Uh, that's a great question. Yeah, let me try taking that one, I think, uh, first off. Um, 
the easiest thing to do is to just start and define it as a bot. And that's the closest in spirit to the workflow rules that we used to have. And so um, uh, you just say, when something happens, here's what I want to do. And almost always the thing you want to do is just probably at the start, send an email or something simple. Um, and then uh, there's the standard experiences. Oh, maybe I want to do an additional thing. Or maybe I want to do a conditional thing. So you start building out a little bit of logic in what you do. Um, the need to go look at tasks separately and processes separately is only if you get to the level of, oh, I want to reuse something I did already. And we find that many of our customers, so some of you guys on the call, um, you build complicated apps. You start out simple, they end up being complex. And you don't, and there's a sort of problem of repeating the work. Um, and if you're not able to say, I, I already figured out how to send Joe an email. I've already configured it. Now I just want to call it from another process. You get stuck in that situation. It's only if you've got that situation that you go to the advanced capabilities. But most of the time, you don't need to. Yeah. yeah. I was just going to add to what Praveen said, right? So I think um, our vision is that just like you would come to configuring workflow rules and schedule reports directly, bot is the first place where you would start. And we feel that should be able to help you, just like we showed in the demo today, configure a bot just like you would configure a workflow rule or schedule reports. I think the bonus feature out here is, as you have created the bot, what you will realize, if you do navigate to some of the other tabs, the bot is certainly now composed of some highly reusable components. And that means if you're creating additional bots, unlike in workflow rules before that you had to enter all the actions and the steps manually, well, you can just really flip up another bot by reusing some of the existing components. You can reuse events and processes, and many of the tasks can be reused across multiple processes, making for an extremely configurable experience. And if you do navigate to some of the other tabs, you will be actually able to see indicators which will tell you this specific component is actually reused across other components that you know, kind of gives you that kind of visibility as well. But we feel that you start with bots, stay there, that works for you, if you want to have more power and more flexibility, you can obviously go and start, you know, playing around the other components and use them across multiple bots. Thank you both for that information. All right, so uh, next question. For workflow with sequence of actions, it stops with the process going to different tables. Uh, do bots stop when it needs to run to different tables? Um, Does that question make sense? Um, I'm, I'm, not sure sure I'm, that. I'm not sure I completely understand that in that, um, whether with the workflows or now with bots, um, a workflows had just a linear sequence of action. And um, the tasks themselves, With bots, the processes in bots uh, will give you a sort of richer uh, control over that sequencing because you can do branching and other things. The tasks are still the same tasks, and now we're adding, um, now we'll be able to add some further richness. For example, tasks will be able to give you back with, you know, uh, responses that then can be used in subsequent tasks to be able to build out all these new capabilities, which will be coming. But um, I don't think uh, you're not particularly stopped. Uh, from going to, from going taking actions on a different table that was not a constraint before and it's not a new constraint either. Okay, and um, to the individual glasses question, if you need information, more information, just let us know if we if we can answer that quite correctly. Um, but Praveen, I think you summarized that perfectly, uh, based on based on our takeaway. Um, all right, so this next question we addressed this earlier, but I want to double down and emphasize this. Um, again, uh, hi, I have a number of apps. Do I need to convert all my workflows to bots? Um, Chris, Paul, or Praveen? Yeah, so as we mentioned earlier, right, uh, we will automatically migrate your workflows to bots in phases. Um, you know, through now and 28, you have the ability to continue creating new workflow rules and schedule reports. After that, you'll be able to modify them uh, in phase three, and we will communicate and notify you where we will automatically migrate your workflow rules uh, to bots. So there's no action needed from your side 
to convert any workflow to box. Awesome. Thank you. All right, next question. Uh, where can we find the, the meta app sheet for app sheet that can display um, the efficacy of bots? Okay. So uh, there is a monitor, um, I'm assuming this is referring to the monitoring app that we just walked through briefly. So there is a monitor uh, button on every bot, which takes you to the monitoring app. And in that app, you'll be able to see high level metrics, uh, some graphs, charts, and then you'll also see on the second tab, which is the runs tab, you'll see some bot execution data. All right, next question. Is there a specific, Darko, I have a feeling this is coming your way. Uh, is there a specific format for invoices or receipts that is supported? What kind of interactions are supported with those types of documents? So there is, um, and it's basically the defined extraction format from document AI. So uh, Google has basically a canonical model for what an invoice and invoice line items and their relationships look like. Um, but in terms of, you know, other than not being able to modify that table structure, you're able to use it both within automation and in terms of building views on top of it, just like you do any other app sheet table. So, um, in other words, all the interactions are those of app sheets and process automation, and then uh, the structure is defined by Google, and that's something you can uh, see if you create it in this table and then go to the column definitions, you'll see the exact structure that we provide to you. Awesome. I think and the then second part of the follow. question in, yeah, I just, I think I want to answer the second part of the question, Jennifer. So what kind of interactions is support okay. with these documents? I think that's a very important part. So, um, you know, today we have support for uh, extracting documents automatically. So let's say if you have an invoice that gets uploaded to a drive folder. Uh, today we support, you know, 15-minute refreshes. So uh, we'll be able to take uh, that that document, extract that into a, a table, into an app sheet table uh, that Dark just spoke about. And you can actually have a bot uh, that can trigger off a process, either a simple one-step process or a multi-step process along with approvals. All of those interactions are actually supported against these documents today. Okay. I had a follow up question to I mean, just went away for some reason. Um, the question was how how do you add process document how, document how do you how do you implement um, the intelligent process documenting? And Darko, this is going to come back to you. If I can find the exact question, I'll push it again. Um, so part of it is going to be plan type allows for certain documents to process. But Darko, do you want to add any um, additional detail on how to implement this feature? Uh, so it's really a matter of um, at the time that you're adding a table to your application, specifying that you want a document type of, say, invoice, expense, or W9, and then going through and linking it to a Google Drive folder where, you know, those documents will be placed to trigger the automation, um, extra the automated extraction. So it's really just a configuration-based uh, experience to take advantage of this capability. Okay. All right. And we have Jen, time I, for one. Jen, Go ahead. So Jen, can I jump in? Kurchi has about 10 questions, so I wanted to make sure we answer at least one or two of them. And, uh, yeah, we've got, we've got time for one more question, but I know he's got a multi-part one. Yeah. If I can pick up one of them and answer it, I just wrote an answer, but I wanted to also quickly want to assure you we will take all of them and get to answer. Um, the question you had, I think, was set of a branch. Uh, the branch condition can it use values from previous set? And that's a really powerful thing, and it's been asked for quite a while on the original work rules. Uh, the reason the new infrastructure is going to help us is in, built into it the ability to get results. That that capability is not yet exposed in the, in the version you see today, but will be coming soon. So um, uh, every step will have a re return value or value that can be then used in subsequent steps, which makes it much more powerful than what we had before. It was 
uh, actually next to impossible to retrofit that into the old plumbing we had in the old system. It's one of the motivations to move to a richer and more flexible system. So that's coming through. Okay. Um, I actually want to, there's one more question. I know um, we're, we're at the top of the hour. There's one more question I want to get in that I think is an important one that's come mm -hmm. up recently about RPA mm -hmm. um, styles versus something like no code. Um, this is a long question. The ethos is, you know, what does RPA look like against something like no code? Um, Praveen, you oh. might be the best person to answer that question. Let me that. Yeah, let me take this. I was just wondering how you're just reading it. Sorry. Um, got it. So robotic process automation tends to be sort of a complementary space to um, this, the kind of process automation, business process automation that you do with a platform like Actual Automation, right? Um, so uh, a lot of robotic process automation is trying to automate manual processes that involve interacting with typically older pieces of software. You're running some old system on a Windows PC, and it requires a human being clicking on things. And so robotic process automation takes over a screen, takes over that, does it in a virtual PC, and clicks on that screen. Um, and so we are not in that space. Uh, Google Cloud has a partnership now with Automation Anywhere, which is one of the leaders in this space. And Automation Anywhere is sort of one of the top two companies in, in RPA in the world. And so that's sort of the direction, I think, um, with, with RPA's partnership. Um, but uh, to the extent of when the processes correspond to systems that have APIs that can be integrated with, so it's not about automating some old UI, but automating um, your work at the level of the data and the APIs and the systems, that's where um, our automation is a good fit. All right, awesome. Thank you, Praveen. I know that question's come up a bit, um, and I wanted to make sure we address it, so thank you for that. All right, um, so we are actually two minutes over time. Uh, so really quickly, I want to thank you all again for joining us for the past hour. Chris Paul, um, Darko, and Praveen, thank you all for joining to share um, your words of wisdom and help provide information and guidance as we enter this new stage of our journey. Uh, we have a number of questions still that we will try to address um, within our chat. We'll follow up after this session is over. I highly encourage, especially the quality of these questions, to post these on the AppSheet Creator community because a lot of you are asking very similar questions and we want to make sure that we're able to address this in the best one-to-many way possible. Uh, we will have more education resources coming out in the days to come as well to help support you as we enter this transition phase and we continue to enhance the automation journey for you all. Um, with that, stay safe and stay healthy and we will see you all on the community. Thanks so much. Bye -bye. Thanks, all.